So question two is all about a golf ball which is being hit um, by a club. And there's uh, you know, a picture here which is quite nicely given you a diagram and then you've got some data down here. Now the first question, part A, is a showing answer. So basically you know that the answer has to be between eight and nine. And what we want to know is the speed of the ball at the highest point H. So what do we know about it? Well, basically the horizontal velocity of this ball is going to stay constant because there's, we'll assume that there's no air resistance, which is what it says up here in the question. And therefore the horizontal speed at H is just going to, sorry, the, the speed of the ball is just going to be equal to the horizontal component of the velocity because at H there's no vertical component of velocity. So what I said is it's going at 17 meters per second up, but it's going at an angle of 60 degrees. And therefore this distance here is equal to 17 cos 60, which equals 8.5. And therefore the speed is 8.5 metres per second, which is between the 8 and 9 that I needed to show. Okay, at time t equals 1.5, the ball reaches the highest point h. Calculate the maximum height of the ball. Well, what I did for this is I wrote down suvat vertically. This is what you have to do for every single suvat equation. If it's something to do with motion, just write down suvat. Uh, I then chose the upwards is a positive direction. And what we're looking for here is the height h of the ball, which is the s. So that's my unknown. What do we know? Well, the initial velocity in the vertical direction is going to be equal to effectively this velocity up here. And that's equal to 17 sine 60, which equals 14.722. And I, I wrote it down like this, but I actually saved the number in my calculator so to, so to make sure that I didn't round down too early. When it gets to the top, it's vertical velocity zero, so V is equal to zero. The acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. And because I said upwards is positive, that means downwards is negative. So that's a, it's a minus 9.81. And the time is 1.5 seconds, which was given to us in the question. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for S. So I could really use any of the SUVAC equations. I decided to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So uh, I put the numbers in. So uh, this is what I had over here. And again, I used my, the, the figure that I calculated in my calculator. And when I put this into my calculator, I found the answer is 11.0474, which just two significant figures which is the same as the data in the question, was 11 metres. Now I wrote it down like that in, in case I had to use it in a subsequent calculation so I didn't round down too early. When it comes to part two, uh, to find a distance between points F and G, so this is the total distance that it travels, um, what I said was that basically between F and H it takes 1.5 seconds to, from the, the bottom to the very top, and that means it must take another 1.5 seconds from the top back down until it hits the ground. So the total time taken is equal to three seconds. I then know that because speed equals distance over time, the distance is equal to the velocity times time. And here, I'm using my horizontal velocity because that doesn't change through the whole motion. So if we know how fast it goes and we know the time it takes, we can then work out the distance, which in this case is 25.5 meters. And again, I've given that to two significant figures as 26 meters. Part C, I thought, was quite a lot of work to do for three marks. So what we needed to do was uh, basically show that the ball would still land at G, and therefore we needed to show that the distance was approximately equal to 26 metres. So what I did was I looked at SUVAT again. It's a, it's a motion question, so I wrote down SUVAT. In this case, just my arrow here shows that's in the vertical direction. So between F and G, we know that the total vertical displacement is equal to zero because it starts at ground level and it ends at ground level. We know that the uh, velocity initially upwards was equal to 17 sine 30, which is 8.5 meters per second. So that's the initial velocity vertically. And we know the velocity at the end must be the same magnitude but in the opposite direction. And therefore, uh, if that's 8.5 upwards initially, it must be coming down with uh, minus 8.5 meters per second at the end. Again, upwards is my positive direction. I know that the acceleration is 9.81, but I don't know my time. So again, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find time, and I use s equals ut plus a half at squared. I put in the numbers that 0 equals 8.5t minus 4.905t squared, and this basically gave us two results. Okay, first of all, you could, uh, that's 0 when t is equal to 0, but obviously that's very much the time at the start over here. But we want to know uh, maybe the time to go from here to here. And uh, the other time is you can rearrange this to say that 8.5t is equal to 4.905t squared. We can then 
cancelled one of the t's and therefore 8.5 is equal to 4.09 t. I can then work this out for t to find that t is equal to 1.7329 seconds. So it takes 1.73 seconds, so compared to the last time it took less time to go from f to g. But it went, uh, it took less time but it was going to higher horizontal velocity and my horizontal velocity um, in this case was equal to 17 cos 30. So it takes less time but it's going faster and therefore the distance travelled is equal to vt, so 17 cos 30 times 1.7329. Again, I kept the whole number in my calculator, which gave me a value of 25.51, which I can then round up to 26 meters. So it's going at a shallower angle, but it's going faster horizontally. So although it spends less time in the air, it does actually travel the same distance. Then uh, part D, what I've got to do is compare the magnitude and the direction of the two velocities um, as the ball lands at G and use this information to suggest with a reason uh, why, which trajectory you would choose to travel a longer distance. So basically the magnitude is the same. They both travel at 17 meters uh, per second. The difference is that they have a different direction or angle to the horizontal. So that's pretty much stating just, uh, just what it has in the graph. So which one would uh, go further? Which one would get further from when it lands to actually getting to uh, the hole? Well, basically I said that ball two has a higher horizontal velocity so it travels further across the green. So effectively this one here comes in faster and therefore moves a lot further across the green. However, you could have said ball one. And it doesn't matter if you said ball one or ball two as long as you say which it is. So you might say that um, ball two has a higher horizontal velocity so it travels further. But counter to that, ball two might have been in contact with the grass for a lot longer and therefore there might have been more friction. So maybe more ball one went further because although it came in at a higher steeper angle, that maybe meant to it bounce higher and therefore there's less friction between the ball and the grass. So it doesn't matter if you have ball one or ball two as long as you can back it up with some reasoning. So some of that is very much common sense. So uh, you basically get one mark for stating that and one mark for stating if it's ball one or ball two with your um, bit of uh, justification. So that's question two. Now on to question three.